Hello and welcome to PCI's Tech TV. In this episode we are going to perform a full atmospheric correction of two Landsat 8 images over Toronto using Geomatica's very accurate and highly automated atmospheric correction wizard. We will then discuss and demonstrate the value of this powerful operation. More specifically we will cover the following topics. Very quickly discuss a theoretical overview of the atmospheric correction process. Use Geomatica's atmospheric correction wizard on one of the images quickly review the results, and then demonstrate the value of the atmospherically corrected image. Let's start with a quick introduction to atmospheric correction. So atmospheric correction is the process of eliminating the influence of the atmosphere. However, it's also going to calculate the ratio of incoming energy hitting a feature versus the amount of that same energy that is reflected away from that feature. Basically, that's not absorbed. This gives us a reflectance measurement in percentage, which is very advantageous, as it's really normalized between a value of 0 and 100. So the plotted curve of these values for all bands of a given pixel, this is known as a spectral signature in every specific kind of feature, whether it's vegetation or sand or soil, water or urban features, they all have unique signatures. So this would really be similar as if you were to go on the field with a spectrometer and make these kinds of measurements yourself for every feature within the image. So for this kind of a process we can use our atmosphere correction wizard which will help people model the atmosphere at the time of image capture in order to make sure that they have a good atmospheric model so that their signatures are correct. This is an example of our image signature based on certain atmospheric parameters compared to a, a spectra library signature that would be associated to that feature so we can see here is a bad match which means we have a bad model. This is an example of the same feature with different atmospheric settings. We can see we have a much nicer match here which means that we have a good model. So atmospherically corrected images are great for certain kinds of analysis. This includes classification so we often get better results and we definitely get better automation as we can use reuse the signatures between different images. This is great and often required for certain kinds of vegetation analysis, mineral mapping, and change detection. We will be using change detection at the end of this episode in order to show you the value of atmospheric correction on imagery. So let's now run our atmospheric correction operation on one of our images. So as I mentioned we have two images here, Landsat 8 images. So we have one from, I believe this is uh, July, and another one from September. So one from July, we've already calculated the ACCOR result or the ground reflectance image. So we're going to do it for the one from September. So here we can go to Analysis, Atmosphere Correction, Ground Reflectance. We can go through our step-by-step -step wizard. So we can then choose our DN0929, so this is September 29th. So you can see all of these parameters are automatically set up for us, which is great, as it can save us a significant amount of time. We're going to select a folder to put our output or files. We can skip the cloud masking, water masking, and haze removal. We're going to just use a constant elevation in this example. And now we can go to setting our atmospheric model. So for this, we've now introduced a spectral plot, which will calculate the atmospheric are their ground reflectance values based on the parameters here for different pixels. That this allows us to sample different pixels compared to a library signature to make sure that we have a good model. So we'll just show a quick couple examples of that. So we'll go to our spectral file here. We'll choose, for example, pine. We'll add this to the plot. And maybe we'll choose one more, such as we can choose. Uh, asphalt. Okay, so now we'll just compare these to a couple different features in here. So already we can see that down along these areas we have some mixed deciduous as well as pine forests in these regions here. So we can sample different features and you can see that you get a variety of different ones, different values along this. And all we want to make sure is that our signatures are representative of um, what the image, what we had in the image compared to our library signature. So some we're going to get a better match and others we're going to get a little bit of a weaker match. So and this allows us to also change these values here 
in order to get a bit of a stronger match in certain cases. So we know that it's a fall. So what's very nice is we do have a dynamic uh, graph. So now that we have that one checked, we can also sample a few other places. So for example, we can do our asphalt. We can look at, see how this signature looks. So we can trace along this roadway here. Oops. So we go on. And really what we want to make sure in this case, because this asphalt is really, it's not overly dark or it's not overly bright. So we want to make sure that it, for the most part, falls within this window here. At this point, when we're happy with the settings that we have, we can close this. The settings will automatically be added here. And then we can generate our atmospherically corrected result. So we can now close this window. And now we can review our results here. So let's just do a first kind of quick review. So a lot of people ask this one simple question, which is how come we don't really see any major difference between the raw DN image and our atmospherically corrected image? Well, it's true. When you apply the histogram, uh, an enhancement to the images, you're really not going to see any difference. So you can see that here. We'll apply an enhancement to these two as well. And we can see that the same thing here. We really don't see a difference. And you don't want to see much of a difference. So really what we're going to see, where we're going to see the difference, is if we open up the DN values. So if we actually look at the pixel values themselves for these two different images, we can see that or for the two, uh, for the atmospherically corrected image and the raw DN image. So you can see that we actually have a significant difference between these values in here. These are normalized between 0 and 100, and then these ones are not normalized at all. So we have compensations for the sun, uh, the viewing angle, the sun angle. So where this value really comes into play is when we want to perform an analysis with the imagery. So what we're going to do here is we're going to first quickly perform a change detection, a very basic change detection with our atmospherically corrected images. So I'm going to choose my Accor 09 and our Accor 07 and we're going to make it a pseudo color and we're going to run. Okay, and now we're going to compare that with the same results or the same process on our DN images. Our raw DN images. If we look at our two images here, there's a couple things we can notice. One is that something that's really not going to be changing much in terms of or shouldn't change much are these urban features, particularly these roadways. So if we look at this and we look at our change detection result on the roadways for our ground reflectance, you can see that we get lower values, so this means that there's not much change happening in this area. Green, blue, cyan, these all indicate low to no change at all. Now if we take a look at these same features in our change detection from the raw DN values, we can see that they're actually quite the opposite. We end up getting some red, yellow, and orange values, which are indicating that there actually is change happening in this area, which is quite strange. Now if we even look at this urban region here, we can see that we get a lot of yellow, orange, and red. Same thing, which is indicating there's a lot of change happening. When in the other one we get a lot of green, blue, and cyan, which is indicating there isn't much change happening. And when we look at the two images, we can see that there really isn't much change happening overall in these images. The fact that they're changing color should not be detected. Now if we go to another feature, for example, a feature that we know is changing, so if we look over here, we can see that we have vegetation on and off between the two images. So if we look at our atmospherically corrected, we see we get significant change in this area. If we look at our other results, and we can see we really don't get much change. This has a lot to do with the fact that the values are not normalized, and the fact that we have out external influences such as the atmosphere and different viewing angles and sun angles influencing the DN values in these pixels. So this is really the value of atmospheric correction.